From the Weather NorCal Command Center, this is your morning update. Daniels Roofing, licensed, bonded, insured roofing contractor. 45 years of generational expertise, offering a variety of roofing systems in the North State. Composition shingles, metal, tile, fire safe wood shingles, and spray foam roofing systems. An energy saving cool roof, perfect for commercial flat roofs and mobile homes. With other companies, you may get a foreman or a salesman. But with Daniels Roofing, you get Daniel. Call today for your free estimate. Daniels Roofing, three generations working hard to protect your home and business. Good morning, everyone. I'm meteorologist Mike Kruger. You know, before we get to the forecast, I want to remind you that you can share your photos. It's very easy from the free Weather NorCal app. If you have an iPhone or an Android, just go to the App Store, Google Play Store, search for Weather NorCal, look for this logo right here for both Android and iPhone. Click install and you can share your photos here. It's very easy. You can also have all the great information that you get from the free Weather North Cal app. Be sure to check it out. All right, let's start off with Kruger's quick cast. We just kind of get you through the day today and taking a quick look at your forecast to kind of wrap things up there as well. But out the door this morning, I tell you what, it's still going to be pretty mild out there in those morning hours, looking at temperatures somewhere in the low 70s for the valley. We're kind of a bit of that peak of that warming trend I've been talking about here for today. Temperatures should be somewhere in the low 60s for most of the higher elevations and for the coast still looking at those mostly cloudy skies with temperatures in the mid 50s. The smoke, we may see some of that kind of make its way to the north end of the valley. Redding, maybe even Red Bluff seeing a little bit more haze than we did see yesterday, maybe even a faint smell of smoke. But that should dissipate and move on out later this afternoon. By 6 p.m., most of that smoke is now off to the north and to the east of the fire itself, and that continues into tonight. So here's what we can expect for today temperature-wise. Yes, today, as I mentioned, is the peak of the warm trend. We could get up to 106 for Redding, 102 in Chico, mainly in the 90s for many of the higher elevations and for Trinity County, uh, places like Weaverville, Hayfork, most likely over 100 degrees as well. Temperatures inland over 100, but for the coast, yeah, that's where you can go to cool off. Temperatures still there in the mid-60s. Let's take a quick look at your seven-day forecast, starting off with the valley. Now, the good news is we are te seeing temperatures slowly drop after today. It's going to be a gradual drop, but eventually into the 90s by Sunday for everyone in the valley, low to mid-90s by the time we get into Monday and Tuesday of next week. Taking a look at the coast, no big changes there, mid-60s, but inland, you've got those temperatures dropping down to the 80s by Monday, Tuesday, but generally staying in the 90s here for places like Weaverville. We take you out to Mount Shasta, Alturas, and Susanville. A bit hazy, a little bit smoky, especially to the east of the fire itself, but we are expecting not to mention uh, even parts of early next week. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at those weather headlines. We're talking about that typical summer heat the rest of the week, but hot and dry afternoons are still in store for us with a slight dip in our temperatures over the weekend and even cooler by next week. Of course, you saw that in the seven day outlook. Now, this is the latest fire perimeter coming in from last night. I do want to remind you that when you're watching this, this is the latest data that's coming in. Unfortunately, a lot of the data comes in after I record this. That's why it's important if you really want the latest on the fires, that you watch Coffee with Kruger every weekday morning at 7 a.m. We'll have the latest fire perimeters and taking a look at some of those distances as well. But as of last night, you can see it's bumped up to 420,692 acres, still at 34% containment. Keep in mind, these black lines are where that containment is. So those are typically going to be areas that you have less concern. So I'm putting in here the fire perimeter from yesterday morning, 24 hours ago. And then, of course, right here, you've got uh, where that fire has grown uh, as we go into yesterday evening. These right here are firing operations that we have right here, right? So that's what we're looking at here. Again, this is Mill Creek. Uh, the creek itself that we're looking at here is kind of give you an idea. But these are the firing operations that we did see. Again, this is where it's filled in. Now, most likely, this has all filled in and burned here as we came into the overnight hours into this morning. But again, we'll have that latest fire perimeter here at 7 a.m. on Coffee with Kruger. Let's take a look at your NorCal uh, perimeters here. Uh, for Mill Fire 
and for the Smith Sires. Some good news for today, or yet yesterday that is, we saw 100%, we're up to 100% containment uh, for the gold complex. So that is really good news. All right, also still at about 91% containment with that hill fire and up north into the Shelly fire, still at about 92% containment. Haven't really seen much movement with those fires here and much change here. So the air quality this morning, as you can see, looks like it's pretty bad out in Chico, but especially to the east of the valleys where we're seeing that here. But we probably will start to see, as you saw in that smoke forecast, conditions getting a little bit worse. Let's take another look at that. Here we are at the noon hour. Some of that smoke making its way into Redding in particular, but maybe even Red Bluff and of course to the north and east of the valley. But that should dissipate in that smoke and haze later this afternoon and evening. Most of that dense smoke will be to the east, northeast of the fire. Then it kind of starts to settle on in as we go into some, uh, Thursday morning. And then we go into Thursday afternoon. Uh, even in the noon hour, most of it's still pushing off to the north and east of the fire and then east of the fire by the time we go into Thursday evening and Thursday night. All right, let's take a look at the forecast winds. Now, one of the things I want to remind you when we look at these winds, they're not changing much since we've seen the entire season. We haven't really seen any major wind events and it's not necessarily the winds per se, the winds that we're seeing here, the, just the overall wind pattern that's affecting the fire and has affected the fire. The main force, the main driving force for the park fire has just been so much available dry fuels for the fire to really uh, hold on to that it's just been burning and burning. Now, these fires themselves create their own weather. We hear that all the time. And it's the winds that these fires generate, especially when the, the fires really take off. You get those big plumes of smoke. That's when that air kind of comes in on all sides and just helps to even add more fuel to the fire and you get those really gusty winds around the fire. So that's really what we're looking at. But we still have to look at the overall pattern. If we see any changes as far as big gusts of wind or major wind events, those are things that we need to be aware of. And we don't have that anytime soon. Still very dry. Also keep in mind that the humidity levels do have a pretty big impact even on the current fires because the fuels do react pretty quickly to the conditions as far as humidity is concerned. So when we see added humidity in the air, the fuels grab onto that and it's a little bit more difficult for the fire to burn those fuels. As a result, we saw higher humidity this past weekend Look what happened. We didn't see a lot of activity, a lot of growth, right? But then it dried out significantly over the last few days. And that's when we've seen most of the fire activity here over the last couple of days. There, of course, you can see those humidity levels are still fairly low here for today. They do increase a little bit for your Thursday, but overall still very dry. Now, keep in mind when we look at this, we're just talking about the fire danger in general. It has really, uh, we're not really talking about it in relation to the actual fires themselves. But what we're seeing here is those winds picking up from the south. So we do have some high to even very high fire danger. We have to pay attention to this because these are the areas where you have the oranges and reds that if a new fire should start, it will most likely spread very rapidly due to the dry fuels and not to mention the winds. That's the case going into your Thursday as well and not to mention most likely Friday and uh, this upcoming weekend too. So here's the big picture. We do have some moisture that's coming in from the southwest. That's going to impact our weather just in the form of some clouds though, although future cast is getting a little aggressive with maybe some rain. As you can see here, going to five o'clock today, it is showing some shower activity. But I think for the most part, we're just looking at some of those clouds moving in, still pretty foggy with maybe some clearing along parts of the coast. We take you to tonight, early tomorrow morning. Once again, we're seeing a lot of that cloud cover in place. So I think we'll wake up Thursday morning with some clouds, but then as we go through the afternoon, those clouds move out. Again, getting pretty aggressive with that rain. Uh, if it does rain, we're talking about a sprinkle here or there, but for the most part, it's not going to amount to much. That should move on out by tomorrow afternoon, evening, but still seeing a lot of that fog out along the coast for Thursday afternoon. All right, let's take a look at the uh, future cast here. And really one of the things we have to look at is, is any more monsoon moisture heading our way? Because when we have the monsoon moisture move in, we see the potential for mountain thunderstorms. And I just don't see that happening. So that's really good as we take it through next week. 
The added moisture is nice, but the th lightning strikes are not so great. We're also seeing cooler temperatures on the way because this area of high pressure is slowly after today shifting to the south and east. This is going to allow some cooler air to come in from the north over the weekend. There'll be another reinforcing shot of cooler air helping to, re uh, re helping to enhance that area of low pressure a little bit here. As we go through next week, that will keep our temperatures most likely below normal for this time of the year. You can see that trend here. Today is the peak, but temperatures is gradually dropping through the weekend. I'm expecting maybe even as early as Sunday, we're below 100 degrees and we keep it that way going through all of next week. So certainly a welcome sight to at least break away from those triple digits. Now we look at the wave heights and you'll notice they have kind of increased a little bit here, but overall they should start to drop here as we take you into your Thursday. So small craft advisory this morning that will be allowed to be lifted here as we go into the noon hour. So no advisories here later this afternoon. Those winds from the northwest at about 10 to 15 knots. They will be lowering through the morning as well, by the way, with those northwest uh, wind waves, that is, six feet at about seven seconds. All right, so here's your Trinity County neighborhood forecast. Notice the overall trend for most areas in Northern California. It's that downward trend and seeing a nice dip in our temperatures by next week. Now, obviously for the coast, you're not gonna see that. You're just gonna be looking at temperatures mainly around 64 to 65 degrees here. But as we take into the inland areas, again, that same pattern. Temperatures are dropping, in fact, in the 80s by early next week. Your Siskiyou County neighborhood forecast, your temperatures there, well, they're gonna be around 95 for Weed and 95 for Mount Shasta City. 98 for Etna and 104 out in Happy Camp. And you take your Modoc County neighborhood forecast. Yeah, there you can see a bit hazy and smoky at times. Temperatures in the 80s by Sunday into early next week. And your Eastern Mountains neighborhood forecast, mainly 90s today, although some of the warmer spots like Quincy at about 100 degrees, Paradise 98 and 91 for Mineral. Let's take you to the Valley neighborhood forecast with temperatures about 100 degrees or higher. There are some spots that may just dodge that triple digit mark, but for the most part, you can see the north end of the valley is where it will be hottest with 106 for Redding, 101 for Whiskey Town and Red Bluff, a high of 104 degrees. There's a look at your seven day outlook for Redding. Temperatures are slowly dropping after today and should be in the 90s by Sunday, low to mid 90s by Monday and Tuesday. At Cottonwood Small Animal Clinic and Cottonwood Veterinary Clinic, we're here to provide the best possible care for your patients. We understand that your pet is your family member and when your family member is sick, they need urgent help. All our staff is so passionate about the care that goes into all your little creatures. Making relationships with pet parents here in Cottonwood is the greatest feeling in the world. Come find us off the Gas Point exit here in the heart of Cottonwood.